In this lecture, we will try to understand how we can write a program to find repeated digits in a number. So, let's get started. Write a program to check whether any of the digits in a number appears more than once. Like for example, suppose user inputs this number 67827. We need to identify whether any of the digits in this number appears more than once or not. As we can clearly see 7 appears more than once, therefore the output must be yes. I would encourage you to pause the video for a while and try to write a program to perform this task. I hope you're done. Okay. Now let's try to understand how we can write a program to check whether any of the digits in a number appears more than once. I'm going to divide my program into three parts in order to understand it in a better way. And here is part number one. I've declared an array scene of length 10 and the data type of this array is integer. And I have initialized this array with value zero. This means all the locations of this array must contain value zero. This means something like this. Obviously, it is just a small chunk of this array. The question that immediately arises is that, why I want to initialize this array with value 0? Let me explain this with the help of an example. Suppose user inputs this number 23 and I need to find out whether this number contains any repeated digit or not. In order to do that, I have to traverse each and every digit of this number, right? Now we know already that digits can be between 0 to 9 only. Whenever I find out a digit, I will go to the particular index corresponding to that digit. That means if I find 3, then I will go to index 3 and I will replace this 0 by 1. 1 means I have seen the digit and 0 means I have not seen the digit before. Now you can understand why I have mentioned the length as 10. Because there are total 10 digits possible from 0 to 9. Right? And whenever I find out a digit, I will go to that particular index and I will replace value 0 by 1. That is why the name itself suggests scene. Whenever you find out a digit, you will replace 0 by 1. And if you haven't seen that digit before, then it is already filled by value 0. Initially, no input is given by the user. Therefore, all the locations must contain value 0. This means I have not seen any digit yet. This record is important to maintain because it helps us in finding out whether I have seen the digit before or not. If I have seen the digit before, then it simply means that that digit is repeated. And I will simply stop my program and say yes, I have seen the repeated digit in a number. Now, after understanding this part 1 of the program, let's try to understand part number 2. This is the main code of this program, the main logic n depicts the value which is entered by the user. Let's suppose user inputs 23, then n contains value 23. Now as 23 is greater than 0, therefore condition is satisfied and we will come inside this while loop. And we will simply divide this number 23 by 10 and we will store the remainder inside rem variable. Why this step is required? Because it helps us in getting the last digit of this number. That is why I'm dividing this number by 10. Okay? So when I divide 23 by 10, it gives me remainder 3. And I will store this remainder inside rem variable. Then, as we can see, we have an if construct. And inside this if construct, we are checking this condition. Is seen rem equals to 1 or not? This means, have you seen this digit before? Seen 3 means, I will go to that particular index and I will take the value which is stored inside this location. Here we can see we have value 0 and 0 is not equals to 1. Therefore, the condition is not satisfied. This simply means I have not seen this digit before, right? As the condition is not satisfied, therefore this statement will not execute and hence we will land at this point. Here, this line means that replace this value 0 by 1. Go to the third index and replace the value that is stored in that particular location by 1. After this step, we have another step which says we need to divide that number by 10 and store the number inside n. This means I will divide 23 by 10 and 23 by 10 will leave the quotient 2 and that 2 will get stored inside n variable. I will again check this condition. Again this condition is satisfied and I will divide this 2 by 10 and store the remainder inside the rem variable. Remainder now comes out to be 2. That is this digit right? 
Now I will check whether I have seen this digit before or not. I have not seen this digit before, therefore the condition is not satisfied and hence I will land at this point. This means I will replace this value 0 by 1. Because I have seen this digit now, right? I will divide this digit by 10 which gives me the quotient 0 and it will get stored inside this n variable. 0 is not greater than 0, hence we come outside of this while loop. Now this is clear that when n is equals to 0, then it means that we have traversed all the digits and we simply come out of this loop without seeing any repeated digit. Now after understanding this part of code, let's now dive into the part number 3. In this code, we can clearly observe there are basically two cases we need to address. First is when n is greater than 0 and we simply break out of this loop. When n is greater than 0 and you have encountered a digit which you have already seen, then you simply break out of this loop, right? And the previous case that we have seen is when n becomes 0 and we come out of this loop. We already know when n is equals to 0, it indicates that we have not seen any repeated digit. But what happens when n is greater than 0 and we break out of this loop? This means we have seen the digit already. That is why with the help of this break statement, I am coming out of this loop. Let's consider one example in which we have seen the digit and in that case n is greater than 0. Suppose user inputs this number 1, 2, 3, 2. Now initially I will divide this number by 10 and store the remainder inside rem variable. I will divide this number by 10 and it gives me remainder 2. 2 is the last digit of this number, right? Now I will check whether I have seen this digit before or not. I have not seen this digit before, right? Therefore this condition is not satisfied and hence I will replace this value 0 by 1 because now I have seen this digit. Again I will divide this number by 10, now this time I will store the quotient inside n. It gives me the quotient 123 after dividing by 10. I will again check this condition, is 123 is greater than 0? Yes it is greater than 0, therefore I will come inside this while loop and divide 123 by 10. It gives me the remainder 3, that is the second last digit. Now I will check whether I have seen this digit before or not. I have not seen this digit before, therefore I will replace this by 1 according to this line. Now I will again divide this number by 10 and store the quotient inside variable n which is equals to 12. Now 12 is again greater than 0, right? And I will divide 12 by 10 and store the remainder. It gives me remainder 2. Now I will check whether I have seen this digit before or not. Yes, I have seen this digit as indicated over here. As rem is equals to 2 and seen 2 means I will go to that particular location and access the value that is stored in that location which is equals to 1 and 1 is equals to 1, right? That means I have seen this digit before. Now as condition is satisfied, therefore with the help of this break statement, we come outside of this loop. And you can clearly see that n is also greater than 0. This is always the case. When you are breaking out of this loop in between, then this is always the case that n is greater than 0. It is clear from this fact that when n is greater than 0 and you are coming out of this loop, this means that you have seen the repeated digits in a number and hence the output must be yes. And when n is equals to 0 and you are coming out of this loop, this means that you haven't seen any repeated digit in a number, right? And you must output no, okay? Now let me give you the final part 3 code. If n is greater than 0, then we must print yes, otherwise we will print no. Now let me combine all the three parts and execute them to know whether our code works fine or not. I have specifically mentioned all the parts of this particular program. This is part 1, this is part 2 and this is part 3. And here there are two extra lines in which I am asking the user to enter the number. Rest of the code is same as what we have seen already, okay? Now let's execute this code. Let's suppose we enter the number 67854. It says no, which is correct. Let's execute this code once again. And this time I'm entering the number 6756. It says yes. 6 is repeated over here. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation.